Need, 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 have to, have to, should. Need, 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 have to, have to, should. You can't. You can't. Ever. And it's bad and wrong. And it's important and necessary. And it's all true. I know it. This is control language, and it started thousands of years ago with ancient kings who decided or people told them that they were gods or descendants of gods or representatives of gods. And so whatever they said went, whatever they said was true, whatever they said was important and necessary to think. And if you disagreed, that was bad and wrong and terrible. And so, so... That's where human discord especially began in the world. Not that it's the origin of the problem, but it's when it really started to take off, when these control words, control language with control meanings began. The most selfish thing I ever did was to decide to figure out how to help people more and more. I did that out of desperation. It was not altruism. It was selfish. It was really selfish to start to say to myself, okay, how can I be helpful? How can I love others more and more? How can I act with love, do helpful things for others without expecting anything back at all in return? That's the most selfish thing I ever have done. Make that decision, and I continue with that decision to this day, to this moment. Why is it selfish? Well, the word selfish has had an upside-down meaning. The meaning of selfish has been upside-down. It's not selfish to get, get, get. I, I, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. I need to get that. And uh, I don't care who I run over as I'm getting what I want to get. That is anti-selfish. That's against self. That's against God. But if you're atheist, okay, I don't expect you to believe in God. You don't need to believe in God. And I'm not saying that you're worse for not believing in God because that would not be helpful. What is helpful is to get really selfish and love other people more and more and more. That's true selfishness. True selfishness is actually helping self. These other things called selfish are the opposite of what helps. The word selfish has a terrible meaning. The meaning of the word selfish is upside down. It really helps to write, to turn the meaning of selfish upright so that the meaning of selfish straightens out and we realize it's selfish to help. Changing the meaning of the word selfish was one of the things that really got me going to zoom out of 10 years of increasing and terrible depression in 10 weeks. 10 weeks. And that's because I decided to follow the second command of Jesus. I was atheist at the time. And so I didn't have access or I accept that I could have had access to, but I didn't choose to use the first command of Jesus, but I used the second command of Jesus, which is to love each other, to love people, to love your enemies. Love your enemies is the most powerful three words ever spoken. If we are to love our enemies, there's nobody left not to love. It seems really difficult to do, but it's only difficult if we retain harmful anti-human words, anti-God words. These words have anti-human meanings, the w- meanings that are against humans, they're against God. These meanings are human meaning of true, human meaning of important, necessary, bad, wrong, and so forth. I'm going to love the fact I've got an allergy. (coughs) My apologies. And I'm also going to love the fact that God has provided water. (coughs) 
By feeling love at all costs, there aren't costs. Love is intelligent. God is one, and that means that love and intelligence in God are not only not separate, they're not distinct. The intelligence of God is the same exact thing as the love of God, thinking of love as joy, peace, warmth, kindness, and whatever God experiences that goes beyond, so far beyond what we can experience. So let's do more love, okay? How do we do that? Well, it's easy. It, it is just to change the meanings of words. Any meaning of word that gets in the way of love, you can change. That's what I started doing partially in 1992, and that zoomed me out of 10 years of depression in 10 weeks, and then I got really with it after a stupid pause and not doing it. I got really with it in 1998, and I said, okay, Let's see what this puppy can do. The, the process of changing the meanings of words, changing anything in my life that interfered with the feeling of love, which, which means changing my behaviors, changing my actions, and so forth. But if there was a behavior or action that I wasn't changing, by changing the meanings of words and conforming them to make words agree with love and not interfere with love, then I just felt love naturally more and more, and then my actions naturally conformed with that love. So my actions became more and more of love. Love is of God, and people who are of love are of God. In other words, siding with God, you could say. That's not to say that a person who feels pain is against God. No people are actually against God. It seems like it. If you take the meanings of words that move people to fight God if you t and, and to fight people, if you take those meanings out, nobody's going to fight anybody because everybody's going to be full of love connected with love. Love is there all the time, coming from God, and it just goes whammo the more and more you side with love. So to, to agree with love is, is a simple step-by-step-by-step-by-step by step by step by step thing. It's like drinking water. We drink water. We can take a sip. Imagine this is love. Take another sip. If there's a, like a hand in the way somehow, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. If there's a hand in the way, then I can't really drink this water and I could destroy the microphone as well. But with the hand out of the way, I can drink the water. The hand in the way of the water of spirit, shall we say, the water of the love of God. The hand in the way is, simply put, it's Satan. I didn't even believe in Satan until the summer, but divine influence caused me to recognize, okay, there is a being. It's not just a principle. There's a being or a collection of beings that are Satan. So the words of Satan are words like need and have to and should and the human meaning of true. That gets in the way of God. Because if I know, I am presuming to know what God knows, to be identical in my knowing to God's knowing, and that's bogus. That is so bogus, it's, it's absurd. I don't know any of God's actual truths. What's true to God, I don't know what that is. I want to move in that direction. But love is God's intelligence, or at least part of it, at least what we can detect of it. And following love, acting from the love we feel, and whatever feels loving deep down, feels loving and right deep down, that is righteousness. Righteousness is 
acting according to love. Acting according to joy, warmth, goodwill toward other people, kindness, a spirit of generosity, and balance and being grounded. Not flighty up in fantasy land. Love is not a fantasy. Feeling love more and more and more and more and more, you'll get to a point where suddenly you're just going to decide to live according to love with every action you take. You'll decide that once you get these meanings out of the way. You'll decide that, and then boom, you're going to feel so good. You just, I mean, oh, I want you to feel that. You don't need to. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, but I do want you to experience that warmth and tenderness that is God, God's spirit coming to us, God's intelligence coming to us. The end of the Bible, at the very end, what happens? Well, there's joy. All the tears are wiped away. There's no more sorrow. There's love everywhere. There's peace. There's celebration. At the end of the Bible, that tells us what God is really about. That's what God is about. So, I'm going to come back in the, ne in the tomorrow. I'll, tomorrow, and uh, as much as I can, I'm going to be talking about this stuff. Um, uh, why haven't I been doing that? Well, I follow guidance of love felt deep, deep down. That is where God is. The kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Where does God live? The kingdom of heaven. That means God is actually within each person. It's not complicated. The kingdom of heaven is within you you can trust in, that's faith, you can trust in and act according to, you can be faithful, which is faith also, you can be faithful to the feeling of love. When maybe thoughts interfere with that ability, that's not your fault. You are not bad or wrong ever. Fault interferes with love for people, and each person is a person. We don't have to grandiosely puff up and say, I love myself, but we can love the fact that God gave us existence. And we can love each person's existence. Okay, so one thing that really helps if you're feeling stressed or down or whatever is to make fun of these anti-human words. That helps bring a... Uh, that helps to disconnect and make less important the meanings that harm us and the meanings that literally come from Satan. At least that's what I'm getting. Okay, so you could do this with me if you want. We could we could call it we could call it love robics. Um, need to need to need to have to have to should you have to you have to you can't. I, uh, yeah, okay. Ultra lame, that's ultra lame. But the word lame used in that context is anti-love, okay? It's hurting you if that's what is coming up, and it's not your fault. You're not to blame. The words have controlled human spirits for long enough. And those words distract by saying, oh, well, you're talking about those people shouldn't feel that, or I shouldn't feel that emotion. Don't tell me what to feel. That's those words operating on the basis of need and have to and should and should not and can't and so forth. You can feel anything you want. You can be in as much pain as you like or not like. And none of it is better or worse because ideas of better and worse in that kind of moralizing sense, those meanings interfere with love. If I think I'm better than you or better than anybody or worse than anybody, then I'm distracted from love. Love is not about who's better or worse because love is about the unity 
of us with God. We are not God. None of us is God. Waving the, you know, like magic God hands or something. None of us is God. We're tiny. We're minuscule. Just like an atom is part of a river that leads to a great ocean, we are those atoms in the river leading to the ocean that is God. We're not separate from the ocean. We're not separate from the river that is also God, that is God's love, God's spirit that is carrying us. But when, as atoms, we start to row our boats upstream, we're moving away. We're moving against God's current. We can just decide, I'm going to go with God's current. Okay, that's enough for now. Make fun of meanings instead of people. Meanings are not people. None of us is responsible for this mess. This mess is caused by Satan, not by people. Love is where it's at. God is one God, the only God. God is the perfection and glory of everything. God is so beautiful. I nearly forgot to just try to convey some tiny bit of how good you are going to feel, how fantastic, magnificent God can feel more and more and more when you go after that feeling by saying, God I don't feel like I can do it. Please allow me to flow down your stream and just change anything in my life that interferes with your love. When you do that, you feel just better and better and better and better and better using whatever works to feel better, starting to do less and less of what doesn't feel better because it feels better to help other people. And to do that, it means feeling more and more and more and more and more love, joy, and peace. <laughs> There's this guy online who is like known as the smiling guy. He sits in like a meditation pose and his face looks pretty grim. He's an artist. He, it's, it's performance art, durational art, etc. His face is grim and then he puts on this super fake smile and just holds it for like four hours. Um, um, he's, I think, trying to say, um, look, there's falseness going on with either meditation or the idea of, you know, uh, you know, trying to put on a good face or whatever. Well, that, that's maybe a valuable thing that he's doing, I think. But I would wish that he would decide to side with love instead of trying to show the falseness of the world. Instead, he could feel better and better. It's only the meanings of words that are interfering with him feeling better better. Okay, have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow.